So basic and clinical signs that actually means uh, first prof, second prof and third prof from what you know Indian MBBS is all about. So it would have a lot of information from SPM. It will have uh, some information from pathology, pharmacology, biochemistry, anatomy, uh, cellular histology, uh, and uh, a little bit of uh, you know microbiology as well. Of course, uh, number one is cell cytology. So, what does cell cytology means? It means uh, that we the the cell cytology that we had been studying all through our plus two then through uh, you know mbbs and all so down to the level of of chromosomes down to the level of mitochondria down to the level of lysosomes uh, peroxisomes and when we are reading as doctors cell cytology means how it affects the medicine that we practice like we need to know which are the diseases that are associated with certain enzyme deficiencies certain chromosomal disturbances uh, certain genetic disorders, they are all included in cell cytology. Then, of course, comes the number two, that is uh, epidemiology. Oh, that is one boring stuff. But believe me, as far as MRCP is concerned, epidemiology is about more of about calculating sensitivities, specificities, positive predictive value, negative predictive value. These are the most important four parameters if you want to uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, knowing what to do in uh, if can you can you see the screen now i just shared an image yes sir yes yeah so this equation you have to uh, remember cram up draw it again and again it is the easiest form of a, a, a tabulator table which can be remembered to calculate all the answers related to uh, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, sensitivity, specificity. So whatever test, let us say there is an X test being done and the test is done in, let us say, uh, some group of sample size of patients. So test outcome is positive, test outcome is negative that you draw on the left side. And if they do have the condition, we write it on the upper pole. So the condition is positive, the condition is not present or negative. So just you have to draw this bit, okay? Rest, everything can be calculated. So this is true positive, this is false positive, they move in. All P's are from left to right in the upper corner. All P's. That means true positive, false positive, positive predictive value. All P's are in the first floor. And what is on the ground floor? It is all N's. So false negative, true negative, and of course negative predictive value. And always remember, it starts with true positive in the first cube or the chamber upwards. So it crosses down to true negative on this side. I am why I am telling you because in the exam you will forget drawing this. Uh, you know where to put what. So false positives also cross like this. False the word false crosses like this. So this is false positive and this is false negative. What is positive predictive value? It is true positives divided by true positive and false positive. That means true positive out of all the positives. So that would definitely include the true positive and the false positives. So this gives you the positive predictive value. And the negative predictive value of a test would be the true negatives divided by all the tested negative ones. That means true negative plus false negatives. That means this is the negative predictive value. Then comes another MCQs, sensitivity and specificity. So here 
what you do is that in positive predictive value it was tp divided by tp plus fp here it will be tp divided by tp plus fn all right that means true positive divided by true positive and false negatives false negative means those people who actually have the disease but the test has said that the person is disease less for example hba1c is done to diagnose uh, diabetes if, if its level is more than 6.4% we say okay fine the person is diabetic but there would be some percentage of the population who are diabetics but hba1c would not tell us it would tell us that it is normal so those people do they don't have diabetes wrong they have that means the sensitivity testing sensitivity of hba1c would be the number of people who the test reported as positive let us say x divided by x of course plus false negative means the under reported diabetic patients who have diabetes but not reported d n r so this is how you calculate sensitivity so on the other hand is the specificity which is of course the true negatives divided by false positive and the true negatives that means true negatives why it has to be divided with true negative because it is a that fraction of the patients who did not have the disease but the test said that the person has disease this is seen uh, in in many times again let us say hba1c so you did hba1c on a patient it showed out to be 7% but patient did not have diabetes so what does that mean that means it has been wrongly picked up he did not have a disease he was actually a negative but because of the test it has been picked up so when i say anything related to f anything f is parameter of the test when i say t it is the parameter of the patient now that means true positive means patient is having the disease t okay f means parameter of the test false positive means it is the test which is showing the patient to be positive same way put it here t means parameter of the patient so negative true negative means patient does not have disease and false negative means the patient the test has told us that the patient is negative so our perspective changes or the way we look at the fraction changes so this is why i wanted to start with this because this is the most important table in whole of the epidemiology if you understand this you will never miss out on scoring at least four questions in the morning and four questions in the evening session of the exam is that clear to you any questions any doubts ask great so second became the epidemiology cell cytology epidemiology third is metabolism third is metabolism and i mean you have to read about it in in basic sciences in time we don't know what's there in the basic sciences no? that's why so basic sciences and clinical science so in clinical science all that we used to read in hutchinson that means the clinical aspect of disease we have to understand clinical aspect of disease people ignore it because it is boring people ignore it because it is laborious people ignore it because it is volatile and people tend to forget it but that that doesn't mean that it will not come in the exam 20 questions would come from basic sciences and clinical sciences so that means it's a lot at stake so now the best thing otherwise if i teach you about the epidemiology we, we, we will be lost in the gamut of things so we will go slow on them and uh, we will just see that 
the, the, the way the questions come, we will, we will discuss the answers. Okay. Okay. So the question is a 53 year old Caucasian lady presents to the clinic with sporadic toe and finger problems characterized by pallor, cyanosis, ingraining and pain of the fingers and toes when exposed to cold. Can anybody tell me what is this phenomena known as? Raynaud's phenomenon. Wonderful. And what is Raynaud's disease? So, very right. This is Raynaud's phenomena. And what is Raynaud's disease? Are they one and the same thing? So, phenomena is something that comes and goes. Like, like the hurricanes, like, like the monsoon. These are phenomena. They happen and then they go. That means, Raynaud's phenomena would be a transient thing. Raynaud's disease will be a more prominent manifestation. Raynaud's phenomena would come and go. That means when the exposure is to the cold, the fingers will become pale, they will cyanose, but then they will come back to the normal. Whereas in Raynaud's disease, this will not happen. The normality may not occur and hence it might lead to gangrene formation. Raynaud's phenomena is due to transient blockage of the peripheral vessels or vasospasm, leading to Sinosis, acrosinosis, but Raynaud's disease is an actual obliteration of the peripheral vessels leading to occlusion of the vessels leading to uh, gangrenous changes and peripheral vascular disease. Anyhow, this patient later develops difficulty in swallowing and labored breathing. Inspiratory crackles are heard on the auscultation. All right. Give me the diagnosis. Lot enough data is there to diagnose this patient. What is the diagnosis? Limited sclerosis. 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 So this is this is systemic sclerosis. Limited disease. Would it have inspiratory crackles and ILD? Mm. I don't think so. No, sir. Limited disease would not have. Yes. So, when we are creating a hypothesis, we must rule in and rule out. So, ruling in limited disease would give us crest syndrome. Crest syndrome is the variant of limited disease. So, calcinosis cutis. Raynaud's phenomena, esophageal dysmotility, sclerodactyly, and telangiectasia. There is no mention of any respiratory disorder. So that means our patient has uh, overlap syndrome between limited and diffuse. Okay. So this is an overlap between these two conditions. So which one of the following immunological investigations is most specific? for the diagnosis of this lady's condition. Anti-topoisomerase 1, which is also called anti-sclerosis 70 antibody. Topoisomerase 1, anti-centromere antibody, anti-DSDNA or rheumatoid factor. Now, give me the answer. Anti-SCL 70 antibody. All right. So, why not anti-centromere? This is why making a diagnosis is so important. Apart from respiratory symptoms, everything else belongs to as told by one of you is limited uh, scleroderma or limited systemic sclerosis. So anti-topoisomerase 1, that is anti-scleroderma 70 antibody, this belongs to Crest syndrome or limited disease. 
वेर एज एंटी सेंट्रोमियर एंटीबॉडी दिस इज मोस्ट सिग्निफिकेंट फॉर सिस्टमिक स्किलोसिस और स्किलोडर्मा वॉट अबाउट एंटी डी एस डी एन ए एंटीबॉडी एनी आइडिया वन आंसर फॉर एस एल ई मोस्टली एस एल ई वंडरफुल ओके आई हैड अ पेशेंट हु केम टू मी लाइक अ मंथ अगो and the patient was having joint pains there was no classical rash so she had anti ds dna antibody negative she had anti histone positive and she had random antibody also like u r n d was also positive now if i get a picture like this in a patient of uh, sle let us say i have diagnosed the patient as sle would you agree with me uh, we will be drug induced very nice so if at all this will be it will be drug induced lupus why drug induced lupus because sle should have must have anti ds dna positive or anti smith positive whereas drug induced lupus will have clinical manifestations of sle but will have anti ds negative anti smith negative anti histone positive all right so now the question comes i should have asked the history of drug intake in that patient isn't it yes sir so in india which is the drug which is usually given to patients who are later on diagnosed with sle who initially also had the similar symptoms like pleural effusion like pericardial effusion like elevated esr and all those things so india mein sabse zyada common diagnosis banaya jata hai tuberculosis so is there any drug which is given in tuberculosis which is which itself increases the chances of having drug induced lupus isoniazid is very common wonderful isoniazid all right now the best part is that isoniazid is an essential drug for uh, att all right and it is metabolized by which pathway cytochrome i mean cpy3 or something i'm not sure okay i will tell you so it is metabolized by a process known as acetylation this is how we pull out questions from questions isoniazid is metabolized by a pathway known as acetylation now this is metabolic pleiotropy what does this mean this means there are some people in the world who are fast acetylators and there are some people in the world who are slow acetylators they have higher toxicity potential and the people who are fast acetylators they have more chances of treatment failure because the drug will be metabolized and the therapeutic levels will not be achieved so that goes on to say that i can create a question that a lady came to me in the hospital and she had tuberculosis diagnosed we started the patient on uh, att and the patient developed joint pains 
rash on the face and uh, you know worsening pleural effusion and worsening esr so what has happened is they will not ask you that this patient has developed drug induced sle because they would understand that you know by now they have given it away but they will ask you what is the genetic defect in the person who was given isoniazid or who was put on the atd or they will ask what is the problem that we are dealing with here so the answer there would be that the patient most likely is a slow acetylator and that is why the patient has higher toxicity and drug induced sle has occurred so which are the other drugs which are known to cause drug induced sle hydrolazine okay anything else uh, many of the antibiotics can cause ciprofloxacin i would write i would write something for you okay his hip easy to remember his hip his means anti histone antibodies are positive H is for as doctor said hydralazine. I is isoniazid, and P is procainamide. So we moved from Raynaud's phenomena to trying to understand systemic sclerosis and scleroderma to the antibodies positive in scleroderma cutaneous type. I mean limited type is. Anti topo isomerase one or anti SCL seventy anti centromere antibody in diffuse disease and if you remember I mentioned something like URNP. The answer is MCTD mixed cutaneous tissue uh, mixed collagen or cutaneous tissue disorder. Okay, yes, doctor. It is URNP or NRNP. 